The United States Navy has a lot of different ships. Each one is built for a special job. You have massive aircraft carriers that act as floating cities with airfields on top. Then there are sleek, fast destroyers that hunt submarines and shoot down missiles. Submarines lurk deep under the waves, silent and unseen. All these ships are like specialized tools in a giant toolbox. They are incredibly good at what they do, but they are also incredibly expensive. Building them takes many years and billions of dollars, and their specialized nature means they can't easily adapt to new missions that pop up unexpectedly around the globe. But what if the Navy had a different kind of tool? What if it had something more like a Swiss Army knife? A ship that isn't the best at any single thing but is good enough at a whole lot of different things. This kind of ship would be a game changer. It could fill gaps in the fleet, take on missions that don't require a high-end warship, and do it all for a fraction of the cost. This isn't just a fantasy, this kind of ship already exists. It's called the Expeditionary Sea Base, or ESB for short, and it might just be the most underrated and important vessel in the Navy's entire inventory today. The world is a complicated place, and the Navy's missions are always changing. One day, they might need to support special operations forces in a remote location, the next, they might need to help with disaster relief after a hurricane, then, they might need a floating base for mine hunting helicopters and drones. Using a billion dollar destroyer or a brand new frigate for these kinds of jobs is like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. It's overkill, and it wears out your most expensive tools on tasks that a simpler, cheaper platform could handle just as well, if not better. This is where the idea of a versatile, affordable ship becomes so powerful. The Navy needs more ships in the water, a concept called presence. Having a ship somewhere shows a commitment and keeps an eye on things. But the fleet is shrinking because new ships are so expensive. The Navy is caught in a tough spot. It needs more ships, but it can't afford to build enough of the high-end warships it has traditionally focused on. The solution isn't to stop building powerful warships, but to supplement them with something far more flexible and affordable. The ESB is that solution, ready and waiting. So, what exactly is an expeditionary sea base? Imagine taking a massive oil tanker and redesigning the top part. You get rid of the oil tanks and replace them with a huge, flat flight deck and a large open mission bay below. That's basically an ESB. These ships are enormous, stretching nearly 800 feet long. They are built on the same hulls as the Alaska-class crude oil carriers, which makes them cheap and reliable. The Navy didn't have to invent a whole new ship from scratch. They took a proven commercial design and adapted it for military use, saving a massive amount of time and money in the process. The main feature of an ESB is its huge open flight deck. It's not an aircraft carrier for launching fighter jets, but it's perfect for helicopters. It can support the largest helicopters in the US military, like the CH-53K King Stallion. This makes the ESB a perfect floating forward base. It can act as a lily pad for helicopters to refuel and rearm, extending their range far from land. This is incredibly useful for all sorts of missions from supporting US Marines to conducting counter-piracy operations or evacuating citizens from a crisis zone. The ship becomes a mobile airport that can be parked anywhere in the world. Below the flight deck is the Mission Bay. This is a huge, flexible space that can be configured for almost anything. You can store small boats, unmanned underwater vehicles, shipping containers full of supplies, or special equipment. This area allows the ESB to be a mothership for other operations. It can launch Navy SEALs on raiding craft, deploy mine hunting robots, or serve as a logistics hub to support other ships in the area. This modularity is key. The ESB isn't locked into one role. It can change its mission just by changing what it carries in its mission bay. Because of this design, the ESB is the ultimate support ship. It's not meant to fight battles on its own. It doesn't have big guns or missile launchers like a destroyer. Instead, its job is to make everyone else better. It supports special forces, it supports mine warfare, it supports helicopter operations, and it can even support disaster relief. It's a floating pier, a floating gas station, and a floating warehouse all rolled into one massive, adaptable package. This support role is less glamorous than a frontline warship, but it is absolutely essential for modern naval operations around the globe. When the Navy talks about building new ships, the conversation often turns to frigates. The new Constellation-class frigate is a powerful ship. It's designed to be a multi-mission warship, capable of fighting other ships, submarines, and aircraft. It has advanced radar, powerful missiles, and a sophisticated combat system. It is, without a doubt, a capable fighting vessel. 
but that capability comes at a very, very high price. Each new frigate is projected to cost over $1.2 billion, that is an enormous amount of money for a single ship, especially when the Navy needs to grow the size of its fleet quickly. Now, let's compare that to the Expeditionary Sea Base. An ESB costs around $500 million per ship, that's less than half the price of a single frigate. For the cost of just one frigate, the Navy could buy two ESBs and still have money left over. This cost difference is staggering. When you need to put more hulls in the water to cover more of the globe, simple math tells you that buying two ships for the price of one is a fantastic deal. This isn't about replacing frigates entirely, but about making a smarter choice about how to spend limited shipbuilding dollars to get the most bang for your buck. Then there's the issue of size and flexibility. A frigate is about 500 feet long. An ESB, as we mentioned, is nearly 800 feet long and is much wider. That extra space is what gives the ESB its incredible versatility. A frigate is packed tight with its own weapons and sensors. There isn't much room for anything else. An ESB is the opposite. It is mostly empty, open space, ready to be filled with whatever the mission requires. It can carry far more fuel, supplies, and personnel than a frigate. This allows it to stay on station for much longer periods without needing to be resupplied. This brings us to the core of the argument. A frigate is a fighter. An ESB is a facilitator. The frigate is designed to do a few things very well, mainly fighting. The ESB is designed to do many things pretty well, mainly supporting others. The Navy needs fighters, but it also desperately needs facilitators. Right now, the fleet is short on the kind of utility players that can handle the day-to-day -day workhorse missions. Buying more frigates is like adding more star quarterbacks to a football team that has no offensive line. The ESB is the offensive line, it does the dirty work that allows the star players to succeed. The true genius of the ESB platform lies in its future potential. Because it's essentially a giant, floating, empty platform, it can be adapted to carry the weapons of tomorrow. One of the most exciting ideas is turning the ESB into a massive auxiliary missile ship. The US military is developing containerized weapon systems. Imagine a standard shipping container that, with the press of a button, opens up to reveal a missile launcher inside. These could hold anything from Tomahawk cruise missiles for striking land targets to anti-ship missiles for controlling the seas. An ESB could carry dozens, if not hundreds, of these containerized launchers on its vast deck. This would fundamentally change naval warfare. A single ESB costing a fraction of a destroyer could suddenly be armed with more firepower than an entire surface action group. It wouldn't need a fancy radar or combat system of its own. It would simply be a missile mule, getting its targeting information from other ships, drones or satellites, and then launching its weapons on command. This concept, known as distributed lethality, spreads the fleet's firepower across many more platforms, making it much harder for an enemy to counter. It makes the fleet more resilient and far more deadly. Beyond missiles, the ESB is the perfect mothership for the coming drone revolution. The future of naval warfare will involve large numbers of unmanned systems both in the air and on the water. The ESB's huge flight deck is ideal for launching, recovering and servicing large, fixed-wing unmanned aerial vehicles. UAVs. These drones could provide persistent surveillance over huge areas of the ocean for days at a time. The mission bay could launch and recover unmanned surface vessels and unmanned underwater vessels for everything from scouting to mine hunting, all while the human crew stays safe. Ultimately, the choice between more ESBs and more frigates is a choice about the future of the Navy. The frigate represents the traditional way of thinking, building exquisite, expensive, multi-purpose warships. The ESB represents a new way of thinking, building affordable, simple, and highly adaptable platforms that can be easily modified for different missions. In a world of tight budgets and rapidly changing threats, the ESB's flexibility is its greatest strength. It allows the Navy to grow its fleet, distribute its firepower, and embrace new technologies like drones and containerized weapons. We need more ESBs, and we need them now.